As we consider the elimination system, it's important to talk about peristalsis of the digestive tube. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And peristalsis is the movement, the smooth muscle contraction that pushes the material down the tube. This is a, a flexible, windy tube. Material is not just going to fall through it. It actually has to be pushed along. And this movement, this muscle contraction, is very important for that movement. It wouldn't happen without it, okay? So the structural integrity and the, the activation of the tube, the muscles that are in the tube, are, become very important. So the structural integrity is what I'm talking about that is, is that basically we can look at, and you've heard me talk about this already, look at posture and position of the body. And if I'm sitting hunched over, folded over, then I'm crunching down on the tube and I can be affecting the ability of that tube to, to, to do its movement. But there's other things about this whole you know, activation of movement that we need to talk about. And one of them is, is nerve innervation, right? So there's actually have to, nerves have to go into the, the visceral and, and innervate them and tell them, I mean, there has to be that signal that gets through to the muscles that says to contract. Well, those nerves are down in the, the low back and the sacrum to get most of the colon. And so a lot of people are, are so compressed and injured in their low back and sacral area that they're actually not, and in fact, this, this could even happen at birth. I've even worked with babies. If, if you have a, a, a very, an infant that's not pooping, one of the problems is that you know, if the, if the movement is not happening, the peristalsis isn't happening, it could be that they, their sacrum got injured at birth uh, you know, in the birth process, and they just need some very, very gentle massage work called craniosacral therapy that needs to get done to help that that thing that that um, innervation of the colon. Okay, so this becomes really, really important to make sure that all the parts are working. It's not just a matter of saying, oh, it's posture. Or that. There's many different factors, okay? So what I'm saying is one of the factors could be purely structural compression of the low back or compression of the sacrum that's impacting the nerve function ability uh, that the nerves can't actually tell the, the, the colon to do its contracting. The, you know, obviously there's physical uh, uh, you know, postural things where physically I'm weighting down, compressing down into the tube. And we've talked about, we've mentioned that before. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that could be going on structurally. Uh, I mean, obviously structurally, the integrity of the tube itself, if, if the connective tissue has been weakened, and that can happen through long-term use of steroids, for example, uh, repeated steroid shots and, and being on steroid uh, uh, pills, like this, I guess it's prednisone, that can weaken the connective tissue in the body and, and cause these uh, cause you know, a variety of connective tissue to blow out. But basically, the the integrity of the tube, digestive tube, what keeps it in a tube shape is the uh, the wrapping of it, which is the fascial system. And that fascial system, connective tissue, can get weakened uh, and pooch out, and so you get these blowouts essentially. Now, I'm not talking about a blowout like a hole where where fecal material is dumping out into the into the abdominal cavity. That can happen, and that's very dangerous, life-threatening situation, extremely painful uh, if, if, the, if the colon blows out, literally blows out. But I'm talking about where if you had the sausage wrap uh, and it was kind of keeping it in that nice sausage shape with a certain amount, a limit to its size, well, if that cracks, you see that if you've ever seen one of those uh, sausage wraps split, you get that pooch and it bends and you get this, this effect. Uh, and that little pooch now can trap Fecal material can trap the poop and not let it pass through, and so you get this little pocket and it's a diverticuli. So the integrity of the tube, both from a postural and, and organ, I mean, get, keeping it organized and 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 intact, uh, but then at the even at the tube itself, we got to keep that tube toned uh, and and intact in that way. So. Um, we, we want to look at this. So one of the things I'm going to share with you is a massage, self-massage for the colon. And then we can talk a little bit more about uh, tone and, and see the comfort tone uh, uh, capsule that we're taking is, uh, has some elements in that that will help to tone the, uh, tonify the, the colon. So that's one of the things that we are already doing, taking the capsules uh, of, of Comfort Tone, that's the, the product that we're using to help with elimination this month, one of the products. So uh, the product we're gonna be focusing on for this massage is the Aroma Ease. Okay, this is this Aroma Ease. And uh, we've, we've gotten this for the massage. Uh, but remember, 
uh, way back at the beginning, we talked about the release oil. And so I'm going to mention that this could also be one that we would use for moving things along, letting things go, uh, releasing. Uh, and so we can do that as well, especially if you feel like in terms of your, you or the person you're working with, if the colon issue may have an emotional component, that's where the release can come in as an oil for use, use that for the massage. And then there's this uh, digize, which we had from last month. Also, again, uh, giving that that uh, uh, soothing action that can you know help to participate in the process. Now, when we're doing massage, we're talking about essential oils. All of these essential oils are, are labeled as cosmetics. And so when, when uh, essential oils are labeled as cosmetics, they're used topically for the skin. This makes it very difficult to talk about an essential oil uh, applied topically that can affect something that's not just topical. So we can't talk about it that way. And so the way I'm talking about it is uh, making sure that, that the, the language is clear that we're doing massage. And it is true, absolutely, without doubt, that massage can be very helpful to, to work on, on loosening and softening the, the, the colon, to help tone the colon, and I'm gonna show you some massage for that. Um, and then we enhance the massage with this aromatic effect or you know, with, the, with these oils. So that's how I'm, I'm talking about it. Um, okay, so I'm going to move back so that you can see the the massage here, and I'm going to be farther away from the camera, so I'm going to have to kind of raise my voice if you feel, if it looks like I'm, sh or if it sounds like I'm shouting at you, it's because I'm trying to, um, trying to get that. So I'm going to angle this down so you can see the, the whole massage. I'm going to cut off my head, but I'm going to talk about the colon here. Okay, so our colon, uh, this is my right hand, right side. The colon's gonna start down here, the appendix is gonna be down here. It comes up, uh, the, the ascending colon comes back, uh, bends bends on, around, comes back to, this is the hepatic flexure, comes around transverse colon, uh, deep again, comes back to the deep, deep and to the uh, splenic flexure, and then down and, and into the hip for the sigmoid colon, which dives deep and curls under, and then dives way back deep, into the the rectum which would be down you know to the anus so this is all this is kind of what we're going to focus on okay so this is the this is the the, the orientation and i'm going to first start with and we can of course encourage our breathing to engage with this so right so i would breathe up and i'm gonna i'm gonna take this action of, of lifting and supporting and so i'm gonna go ahead and get up underneath now here's the hip Right, so here's the, I'll try to get this. So here's the hip hip joint here, okay, and here's my hip crest, and so I wanna be inside the hip crest, right? So this would be belly button way up here, pubic bone way down here, right? So I'm, I'm off to the side, but I'm down closer to the pubic bone than I am up to the belly button. So here I am here, and I'm gonna come in with, with some, some scooping and lift. And if you can already feel once you lift, oh, all of a sudden you just feel that, oh wow, that actually feels pretty good. And you can just sit there with that supported and, and get some massage just by wobbling. So I'm supporting the colon. This is the appendix area. If you had your appendix out, here's my scar right here. I'm gonna just come in under here and lift and then relax. And then I can just do a little waving, uh, you know, kind of just, just waving across my hips this to get a little massage. So I'm just kind of trying to loosen this down here. Now I'm going to come up with the massage up the trans, I mean up the uh, ascending colon and I'm doing this little action of hand over hand um, and it dives back around under the liver and so at this point I'll take my hands and lift again and you can feel the release or the, the pause okay and then I'm going to come across Again, trying to stay with this idea of lift, okay, and lifting, lifting, lifting. It will probably, it might even feel kind of uncomfortable here as we cross this line right in here. If the gallbladder is complaining or if there's any hiatal strain here, you're going to feel that right here where the solar plexus is. That's going to be an area where if you if you push up into that, you don't, I mean, it, it, it it's very sore and it, so you kind of want to, 
just stay under on the underside of that. You're above your belly button. So here's the belly button. I'm above the belly button, but I don't want to jam up into here. Okay, so I'm I'm here just lifting and I'm and the idea is I'm still I'm pushing, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna get the movement is gonna come up here, across here, down here. So a movement, I mean I'm just lifting and again I might come to here and here's the the just to lift. I have a harder time feeling this one, so I'm gonna do one side at a time. So I'm here lift up relax and settle you can feel just a little bit of movement and then come back down now i'm going down now um because that's the orientation and again so here's the here's the the belly button pubic bone way down here i really want to get down at this level here's the hip on the inside of the hip hips hip crest is over here I'm on the inside of this hip and I want to get all the way down in there and that's where I'm going to come up and lift. Wow, my neck just popped. Uh, so the guts can have a really uh, dramatic effect to pull down uh, and, and really pull down on the neck and the head. So um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go down with this and feel this and I'm going to lift up the sigmoid colon a little bit. And then I really can't do, and especially in this sitting position, I can't get deep enough to affect the rectum. So I'm just going to go right above the pubic bone here uh, and where my bladder basically is in lift. Lift that and then allow movement to come, come through here. Okay, so now I did all that without any oil. Uh, and without any breathing, but I just wanted to show you that process. Now I would do that whole thing again with oils and breathing. And so uh, here's my aroma ease, okay? And it's pretty simple, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops or so, because I'm going to cover a lot of ground. I'm going to start here, come across, go down. I'm just going to cover that area. And then as I do the massage, right and this would be here over down right so i could do my breathing and so i'm gonna i won't i'm not gonna do that just okay so here's what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start down here and just breathe make sure i make it around this curve around this bend across i'm just use a couple breaths Now make it around this bend. Now down to the sigmoid. Now I'm using my diaphragm to push down, so I'm getting that benefit of the diaphragm pushing down. Okay, and so now I can use my imagery to breathe in and get that wave to happen. Okay, so that's a simple breath, uh, just with a little bit of oil on there to enhance the tingle and f enhance the massage effect. Um, I would, again, I would be doing this uh, without a shirt on, be a lot easier. And so then I could, I could do all that work with that. And then I might use, like I said, a, a number of different oils. I might use the release oil. I might use the digest oil. Um, all of those would be appropriate. Uh, and, and depending on the scenario. So, okay, so I, I hope that part is helpful again. The, but we're looking for this, this uh, peristaltic wave, and, and you can actually, when we go back, and you can feel that, I didn't really talk about this in, in the digestive system, probably should have, but you can feel that wave start from the mouth and go all the way to the anus. If you swallow, the swallow is the most concrete way to feel it, and you feel that wave. So that wave right there is something you don't have much control over except for the swallow. It's the only part, part in there where you have control of that. The rest of it is, is controlled, the smooth muscle, muscle contraction controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So it's, it's the, the you know, part you're not really conscious of. So everything, it moves through or it doesn't and you don't have a lot of control over that. So this is where the massage or body work might help to open that up and kind of re, 
get that going again. There's other ways to do it. You can do sitting toning, and I'll probably put a video link for core tone uh, that, that you can watch for that, okay? So this is just a start, but it's something you can go, go with to help yourself with getting some peristalsis, getting some movement going, okay? So I hope this is helpful. Happy wellness. We'll see you tomorrow.